So my name is Amy Kavistad and I'm going to talk about HTTP and H to HTTPS migration. You can do this and this is why. So uh, my website is on the bottom, amykavistad.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Amy Kavistad, and the slides are already out on Twitter if you want to follow along. Um, I've been a member of this Word, Word, you know, Boston Meetup group since 2009, and attended the first Boston Word Camp here in 2009 as well. And right now I'm a co-organizer. So that's uh, a little bit about me. Uh, let's see. All right, I've already, I've also been doing WordPress design and development since 2009 graphic design since uh, for 16 years, and this is just a little bit about me. I just got a, I'm co-parenting a puppy who is 11 weeks old. And when the weather is nice, I like to go sailing. So we're gonna talk about HTTPS migration. Very quickly, what is HTTPS? Why we should migrate? Dispelling some myths, and walk through how to migrate your website. So HTTPS is basically a secure uh, layer on regular HTTP. It adds encryption so that the from your website up to the server, that's secure. It also adds authentication so that you, it proves, this SSL certificate proves that you are the owner of the website. So it prevents man-in-the-middle attacks and prevents cookie and password exposure. There are remaining vulnerabilities, though. Uh, your website could still get hacked. Your server and uh, network could get hacked. And there are software vulnerabilities. So we still need to keep WordPress up to date in the core, all the plugins up to date. And as well, we need to prevent against brute, brute force attacks on the login. Uh, so those are still vulnerabilities we need to be aware of. So why migrate to HTTPS? Uh, the internet standard bodies, web browsers, tech companies are basically saying that HTTPS should be the baseline of web traffic going forward. Uh, HTTPS is the internet's next phase. Uh, the Internet Engineering Task Force came out in 2014 and said that pervasive monitoring is an attack. So there is uh, tons of pervasive monitoring, uh, data, data, you know, harvesting. This is just a way that all of our communication right now, if it's over HTTP, is not very secure and it's not private. So they've come out to say that it's actually an attack on us. The White House Office and Management Budget Memo came out, and this and they have the HTTPS only standard. They want all government websites to to have HTTPS so that we can feel that there's a level of security on those. If we're going to be using any kind of government web services, we want to know that our communication is private. HTTPS should be everywhere. There should be a sense that all, everything we do, even if it's not credit cards or customer information, that it's sensitive data. So, and the W3C technical group uh, has these three um, goals, and they wrote this in uh, January 2015. So the web should actively prefer, prefer secure communication, Barriers to adoption should be removed, and TLS encryption must not be compromised. So Mozilla has come out uh, and said that they are going to be depreciating non-HTTP, non-secure HTTP in, on April 30th, 2015. So today they announced that, their intent to phase it out uh, because, as we just saw in the last few slides, there's pretty broad, broad agreement that HTTPS is the way forward for the web. 
Um, beginning in January 2017, the Google security blog has said that they are going to mark HTTP pages that collect passwords and credit cards as non-secure. And right here is what it currently looks like in January. It'll have the I, the I for information in the circle and say not secure. And then the long-term plan is to have, to have the red triangle and say not secure in red. But there's no timeline on that. That's, that's going to be phased in over time. And Matt Mullenweg wrote on December 1st in, on the WordPress blog, moving toward SSL. So we're at a turning point. 2017 is going to be the year that we're going to see features in WordPress which will require hosts to have HTTPS available. Modern browsers and the incredible success of projects like Let's Encrypt have made getting a certificate to secure your, your site fast, free, and something we think every host should support by default. Uh, this is a talk that was given at the Progressive Web Apps by Emily Schechter, a product manager on the Chrome security team. And she said, HTTPS is one of the most important topics for a web developer today. And we need to think differently about HTTP. She says it's now necessary, it, it's now necessary for achieving the best the web can offer and HTTP is underperforming. Uh, this was a talk at WordCamp US in, in Philadelphia earlier this month, and May Lee works at Google, and she said HTTPS will be required for progressive web apps and accelerated mobile pages. So now let's dispel a few myths about uh, HTTPS. Some of, us, some of us might think this now, some of it's been in the past, but uh, that it's expensive. Um, but I just have a blog, so I don't need HTTPS. It's difficult to set up. It will be slower. Or will it hurt SEO? HTTPS is expensive. Uh, it's not anymore now that we have Let's Encrypt, where you can get free SSL. It's difficult to set up. Uh, and that is not really the case anymore either, because you can get uh, Let's Encrypt right through your host, and not every host supports it yet, but there are very, very many that do, and they will handle everything. They will uh, connect, they will set it up, they will have it renewing so it doesn't ever expire. And you can also buy SSL from your, your web host, and usually you'll need a dedicated IP with that, and they'll set that all up for you too. HTBS will be slower. Actually, the opposite will be true, although that may be true right now. We're going to be transitioning to HTTP2, and you'll need to have HTTPS to go on that. Uh, and websites that are optimized for that and delivered over HTTP2 will be 50 to 70% faster than what you're getting right now. So what about SEO? Uh, referral data will be passed through from HTTPS to HTTPS. It, it gets stripped out when it goes from HTTPS down to HTTP. And Google has already said that they'll be ranking HTTPS websites higher. Uh, it's not that much of a difference right now, but it will be growing. So that summarizes the facts. Uh, an SSL certificate is free. It's now the internet standard. It's easy to set up. It's faster. And you'll keep your referral data and get a higher ranking on Google. So let's walk through how to migrate your website. First, obtaining an SSL certificate is pretty easy on many web hosts. Um, my experience with A2 hosting was that it was not enabled on the cPanel, so I just had to say, hey, I'd like this, and within a few hours, they said, okay, we got it all set up. 
um, and I, don't, I didn't need to do a thing. And that, that will, they will also renew that, so I don't need to worry about it expiring. Uh, so if you also have, uh, if you want to buy SSL certificate from your web host, they'll handle the whole process as well. So let's compare the new Let's Encrypt with traditional SSL certificate. Let's Encrypt is free. Traditional ones cost money, and you usually need an IP address although it's not super expensive. Let's Encrypt is valid for 90 days, and traditional SSL certificates are valid for at least a year. They're both renewable, and many hosts will just auto-renew, so you don't need to worry about that. The biggest difference is Let's Encrypt doesn't have a warranty, and traditional ones do. So if you are dealing with credit cards or customer information, you might want to go with a traditional SSL certificate, which would have a warranty. Uh, Let's Encrypt, basic domain-based vetting. The traditional ones have additional customer vetting. Um, the wildcard, uh, Let's Encrypt doesn't support that, and the traditional ones offer wildcard safety certificates, which basically means sub it would include subdomains. So installing uh, it's very basic if you have your web host do it. You can't actually get it at Let's Encrypt, but your, your web host will connect with them and initiate that. Uh, CertBot is also an option if you have shell access at your web host, and that will automate the certificate issuance and in installation. So do I need a dedicated IP address? Uh, it's usually recommended for a traditional SSL certificate. It's um, necessary for older browsers, so if you want to be available to everybody, that's the way you need to go. And there's usually a small monthly fee. So Let's Encrypt is possible because of SNI, which is Server Name Indication, which allows multiple SSL certificates to operate on a single IP address. It's compatible with most modern browsers, but is not compatible with these older ones, which, which are quite old, so it shouldn't be a problem. So implementing HTTPS. So in WordPress, you want to update your site address from HTTP to HTTPS. You would do that under Settings, General, and change both the address and the site address right there. Another way to do this is through PHP MyAdmin. You can go to the WP Options table and update the site URL and the home URL. Then you want to force HTTPS throughout your site. You want to, the easiest way is to use this plugin, WordPress Force HTTPS. I'm sorry, I'm like messing up the pronunciation of that. Uh, so you can use the plugin and that will do it for you, or you can put that code in your HT access file and that will take care of that as well. You want to force it on the admin page, which will automatically force it on your login pages as well. Although I believe if you force it through HD access and that plugin on the previous slide, it will take care of this automatically. But this is also a way you can do this uh, in your WP config file. Uh, and then you're going to have mixed content or insecure content. Because what you really want is you want that green lock. You don't want this yellow triangle or a red triangle. It's almost worse to have that than to have a non-secure website and not show that. So resolving insecure elements. I think the best way to start is with the Better Search and Replace plugin. This will update HTTP uh, to HTTPS in your database. 
that accidentally update your external links as well? There's a bunch of settings in the plugin. You, you might be able to, to do anything that's on your site that's going out. Uh, because you can, searching and replacing, this is some of the code that you would use. Um, it might not catch everything. Maybe there's some other options you can set. So once you load that plugin, you'll find it under tools, better search and replace. And this is a sample of what you can do to run it. Now, before you do any of these changes, you really should um, make a backup of your site, make an FTP backup, a database backup. If anything goes wrong, you definitely want to be able to revert back. So, continuing on, on insecure assets, this is a good way to identify them. If there's something that's throwing a yellow triangle up there, if you go to whynopadlock.com, plug in your URL, it'll show you what, what are the, what's insecure, and it'll show you the path and where to, where to find it to fix it. Another way to do that is with the Google Chrome Inspector. And this shows very similar information as when you do the whynopadlock.com. It shows you what is the orange mixed content, what's red, and it gives you the actual path, so you can you can go and fix that. Don't forget to install SSL on your content delivery network. Many CDNs have Let's Encrypt integration. Many also have a shared SSL option. So you want to update your URL there, and also enable HTTP/2 support on your CDN. Because now that you have HTTPS, you can uh, take advantage of the speed with HTTP2. Google Search Console will need to update that, to, that too. So you want to add your property with the HTTPS and your website address, resubmit your sitemap, and fetch and crawl your website. And Google Analytics, you want to go into your admin and property settings and just switch that. It's a very easy thing to do. You just switch from HTTP to HTTPS. This is a client page that I worked on for a school site, and I wanted to be able to have parents make payments. And they use authorized.net. So that all the customer information was up there. They weren't storing it, but they just wanted the customer to fill in this kind of data right on their website and, and send it off to Authorize.net. So we needed to make the site secure to secure that uh, transmission of information. And it is secure right now. You can see the green lock up there. But uh, it had a lot of mixed content to begin with. This was some of the mixed content warnings. Uh, we had fonts, which was puzzling at first because Google fonts are, are hosted on a secure site. And it turned out that the, these fonts were being requested by a plugin that an author had made, and they had hard-coded HTTP in. So I had to um, email the plugin author and say, look, this is a problem in your code. Can you fix that? Um, they got right back to me and fixed it. If they hadn't, I probably would have had to drop that plugin and go with something else. The second bit of mixed content was actually the logo, which was after the site was launched, it was still pulling it from the development site. So I just deleted that and re-uploaded re the logo, and that fixed that. And then you can see the green check marks. Because when I finally got the green check marks on this site, I'm like, okay, screenshot. <laughs> it's green right now. It might not always be this way. They, they upload mixed content, but at least we, we achieved this. So, and, and that's it. So, again, my name is Amy Kvistad. My speaker deck.com, Amy Kvistad, is where my slides are. And I can take any questions. <laughs> Can 
you say the How question again? How do I work lessons? around wild card? Yeah, for lessons. Since uh, you can only use uh, you know, the man of the wild card. Right, so how can I use Let's Encrypt for wild card? Yeah. Let's Encrypt just says they don't support that right now, and they may in the future. So the workaround for that is you would really need to buy a traditional SSL certificate. You can shop around because there's many different prices. You might be able to, if you're looking to, you know, get by with the least expensive, you can always shop around for that. on each subdomain. That may be a workaround because I, I think that you can use that for single sites. Yeah. You can, yeah, I've done that. You've done that? Yeah. Okay, so that's a good solution. I just did that with the site and it Okay, so that's the solution right there. So you, are you on site ground with that? So the question is, uh, with site ground and the Let's Encrypt, they're going to generate an email to you, and, and you'll need to say, the, well, I'm not sure about that. Every host would be different. I don't, I'm not familiar with site ground, so that, that might be, so that's something that, that definitely we should be aware of, because we don't want that to not auto-renew. Although I imagine if it if it stopped working, you would just say encrypt it again. You know, get it get it up and going. Well, if you have access to super admin, um, uh, if you have a super admin access, you can set up a cron, so then it's automatically removed after every three months. So it's cron job. So that might be using CertBot to will auto renew. I believe if you set it up that way. Let's Encrypt recommends CertBot. And that was one of the other slides I had on there. Very good. That, that should be added to the list. Google Map API needs to be updated. So uh, there's a lot of little loose ends, and that's what I found when I went through this, is that you could start, you, there was about 10 or more steps to do in order to cover everything on the website to make it secure and also to keep your traffic and your social media, your SEO. So if you don't want to use Less Encrypt and you want to purchase a traditional SSL certificate, it's, I would say a ballpark figure is about $75 a year, and a dedicated IP address might be a little bit less than that, so maybe 100 to $150 a year for the two. I mean, if anybody else has some different numbers, I'd be happy to hear, but I think that's about right. They can vary. They can call 
call, let's say, HostGator or GoDaddy, and you push them, they will give you a bunch. For, I think uh, HostGator is like, they'll get the first handful for 80, and after that, additional ones will be $25 a piece. The advantage of that is that it will be automated, it's yearly, so HostGator will take care of it for you. HostGator. GoDaddy has a similar uh, model. Uh, Bluehost up, no, can be a dedicated. Bluehost will only give you one SSL. Or, um, so, do you need a dedicated IP with that too? Yeah, yes. Bluehost. You don't. With HostGator. You don't need a dedicated IP with HostGator. Use your billing. Yes. So, I work in healthcare, which has a whole bunch of HIPAA compliance regulations. And our vendors often try to sell us SSL certificates that are hundreds of dollars. Are those better or more secure? I mean, I know you're not a healthcare professional. But <laughs> so, uh, well, good question. So, you're you work in healthcare, and vendors want to sell you SSL certificates that are very, very expensive. I would say that you're getting a much bigger warranty with those. Okay. If anything goes wrong, that I mean, some warranties are ten thousand or twenty thousand. That might be maybe a hundred thousand or a lot more. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I do actually work in a similar system, but we have about like a three hundred dollar SSL because they do a lot more vetting um, to make it more of the HIPAA compliance and also the privacy policies that they have. So it's a lot more vetting, and then there's a little bit more security that go with like the higher encryption. There are different levels of encryption that I, I didn't talk about where where I'm. Some of the slides you saw just the, gr the uh, green lock. So if you go to a bank site or maybe an insurance site, you're going to see the whole name green, and that's a higher level of security. You would probably pay a bit more for that.